Hey, it's some old guy coding again today, and today we're going to take a look at the 86 or 87 input digitally controlled mixer portion of this project. We already have the tone generator. Um, we sure need to figure out how to uh, control and mix all those signals together to make a uh, uh, tone to the uh, uh, audio output that sounds like a uh, Hammond organ. So you can see I updated the graphic today, uh, 86 to 87 uh, inputs uh, is what we'll need if we include the pedal inputs. But initially, I'm going to leave the pedal uh, tones, uh, tones 1 through 12, out of this, and we'll address that later. So I dug around on Google for quite a while trying to find uh, parts that would make this happen. And uh, I stumbled across a, a, a dual uh, um, volume control, and, and you know, that was okay, but I wanted higher density, and I kept looking. And eventually, luckily, I, I fell across this video by uh, Circuit Digest, where they use a PT2258, which is an obsolete IC, but it is available through uh um, people selling it on eBay for a reasonable price, uh, and here this uh, gentleman made a uh, you know a, a stereo fader, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, or uh, something like that. Using he also talked about connecting this up to an Arduino, which uh, was very useful, and he had a wonderful link here to this Circuit Digest where he talked about connecting it to the Arduino and how to control it through, uh, lo and behold, a PT2258 uh, Arduino library score. You know, it sounds great. And this chip will handle six inputs uh, through I squared C. Sounds perfect. So uh, he also has this very helpful link to the circuitdigest.com uh, on the project, and he has a lot of wonderful information there. But unfortunately, now if I click on that to go to it, it gives me this uh, dark screen and says click to continue to cite. And, uh, well, I'm not going to do it. So you're on your own there if you want to see his article. It is a really good article. It's a shame that it's being blocked with a suspicious, you know, click on this button. Let's take a look at some of the parts of the spec sheet on this. It's uh, it's a six channel, which is nice. It's uh, uh, I2C controlled, and uh, it's more of a, rather than a volume control, it's more of a controllable attenuator from uh, zero to negative 78 uh, uh, dB. Let's take a quick look at the block diagram, and I'm sorry, this is a very light uh, block diagram, a little difficult to see. But you can see it has the uh, six channels, six in, six outs. Um, it's got uh, um, the I squared C uh, data and clock on the bottom. And over on the bottom left there it has code one and code two. And what those turn out to be is, are, is, is addressing bits. It turns out that you can actually put four of these things on an I squared C bus and uh, be able to talk to them at one of four different addresses. Uh, unfortunately, four isn't going to be enough uh, for what we need, so we're going to have to take a different approach. And here's the application uh, note that was in the spec there, and it's just about perfect. You know, it shows the parts that we need, and uh, you know, if we design a bunch of circuits just like this and stack them up, we'll eventually get to the number required at six at a time. But you know, six is a half of an octave, so you know, it kind of works out. So we'll need a bunch of 10 microfarad capacitors, uh, a bunch of one, uh, 100K resistors, and uh, you know some assorted little components. I really didn't want to have to mess with uh, all those little 100K resistors. It's 12 per chip and two ends a piece, and making 24 solder uh, joints. So I went out on eBay and found these little SIP resistor networks, which uh, combine um, six. 100k resistors with a common pin that, that worked out just perfect. I decided to go with two of the PT2285s on a card and so I went ahead and started dutifully uh, uh, breadboarding these things up. I figured well I can do these on breadboard. It's only going to be seven or eight cards. I can muscle through those. But after a while it uh, just was too much of a hassle. 
So I decided it was time to uh, have uh, build my first PC board or have my first PC board made. And uh, I've tried Eagle in the past and Fritzing and uh, just didn't quite get the hang of those. And I did a little more searching and I found this Easy EDA, Easy EDA um, from a JLP, JLB PCB, I think it was, uh, a PCB manufacturer. And uh, this is, uh, I actually had some success with this. This uh, worked pretty good for me. So let's take a, a little bit of a look through the schematic here. So starting on the left here, we'll start, uh, uh, we have two six pin headers here that uh, will connect uh, with uh, a total of 12 uh, tones coming in from the tone generator. Uh, nice manageable groups of six apiece, you know, not a huge wiring harness or anything. Um, next up you can see the resistor arrays in four different spots here of the uh, 100 uh, uh, mega ohm, uh, 100 kilo, uh, kilo ohm, um, 100k resistor packs. Um, also, uh, also, if we take a close look at the two chips here, uh, you can see that um, SDL or SDA and SCL from the uh, 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 connector on the edge here. We'll look at that in a second. Uh, it's basically I R squared C go to both the chips in parallel. Uh, pins four and seventeen make up the uh, um, code one and code two inputs. And you can see that on the first one here, I have four grounded, and the second one I have four going to VCC. And then in both cases, <coughs> uh, 17 is going to uh, select pin, which is also going to the uh, common connector over here on the right that we'll look at in a second. So basically, it's a select for this board. Um, and it uh, seems to work really good that way. And then we'll uh, move over just a little bit here. And these two uh, resistor networks here are, I believe, like 150 ohm. Um, uh, they end up mixing all the signals of the uh, six tones apiece into a, a common mix line that goes down to uh, um, eventually uh, to the six pin he header where there's a single wire down there that all the boards will mix into. Uh, this trim pot was an afterthought and that wasn't, isn't on the first rev of the board. But, um, like I said, these are 150 ohm, I believe. The signal levels are so low on the tone gener out generator output. You know, normally for a, a regular line signal, uh, when I was working in my synthesizer modules, I'd use a 100K um, input resistor for mixing. But being these are so low, I wanted to try to maintain as much voltage as I could, and that's why I used a lower voltage in these two guys. So all of this goes down to uh, a six pin header that plugs into a bus um, that's common to all the boards, uh, mix out. Uh, I mean, it's being mixed with all these resistors here and there. Uh, might as well connect it to a single bus and have all the boards mixed together on a single bus. So that's where the mix line goes to. And then we got VCC and ground. Uh, we have the select pin coming in for this card, which will be wired to a separate pin for each card on an Arduino to uh, and go low to select. And then of course SDA and SCL are both buses too. So we basically have six wires going under the motherboard here that each of these boards uh, can plug into. So I ordered a bunch of boards from uh, JLC PCB. Um, they're not a sponsor or anything. I just happened to go to them. That was a software I was using. It seemed convenient. The prices were good. I'm sure there's others like PCB Way or things like that um, that you could certainly go with too. So you can see here's the boards, the front and the back. And uh, here's one that I assembled. And uh, it worked out quite well. And of course, then there was lots of lots, uh, lots and lots of wiring to wire up uh, from uh, tone 18. Uh, I'm about halfway along now uh, into a little uh, six-pin connectors so that uh, we could connect uh, them to the cards. Interesting to note that the tones on the tone generator aren't, uh, you know, sequential. Uh, for instance, in the lower left is. Uh, um, 
tone 18 and you have to hunt across the bottom there to find tone 19 and then uh, circle back to 20 and 21 and uh, anyway that's the way uh, it worked eventually started moving across to the uh, upper side so it seemed like everything was going along just fine except that the output levels were so low because of course the input levels from the tone generator was so low um, so I took a couple of the boards and I dead bugged on a couple of this uh, ancient LM386 little amplifiers, audio amplifiers, set up in uh, 200x mode. And uh, boy, that made a huge difference. Now, it, it, I'll be releasing a video about uh, how I address some hum issues with a couple of devices. And uh, that'll be a good video to watch uh, for uh, how things sounded and behaved before I put the... Uh, um, um, amplifiers in there. I would have to turn the uh, the mixer uh, that I was sending the, uh, the, uh, the signal into uh, through one of the mic inputs. I'd have to crank up the preamp uh, quite a bit just to be able to hear the sounds. So uh, I think this will uh, really improve things. And because this seemed like a good change, I went ahead and redesigned the board layout to include the LM3D6 on it. Uh, unfortunately, it kind of broke the symmetry of the board to squeeze everything on there. But uh, anyway, I think this this will be a better uh, bet for the long run. Also on this board, I added some decoupling capacitors and also went four layers with an embedded ground and VCC layer. So uh, this is currently off in manufacturing at uh, JLP PCB, something like that. Um, unfortunately, uh, apparently it's a, a, a Chinese holiday. Um, so I'm going to be waiting until February uh, 28th or something like that for, uh, for these boards to get completed and, and mailed out. They're currently kind of on hold. So we'll see what happens when those come in and uh, see how that all behaves. Uh, I suspect that it's going to be just fine. And when we get to that point, we can take a look at some of the other features on the uh, the motherboard um, that uh, that I've wired up. Eventually, that'll be a PC board too, uh, an actual uh, you know, commercially made one. So thanks for watching. See you next time. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and all that good stuff and uh, see what happens next. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you can see future episodes from this channel. And if you'd like to help out and support this channel, uh, go to patreon.com slash coding for as little as a dollar a month. We really appreciate it. Thanks. See you soon.